The Tragic Death of Robert Urich and His Wife Robert Urich was globally recognized as a rugged individual thanks to his roles in popular TV series like Vega and Spencer for Hire. Yet, what many viewers didn't fully grasp was that while Yurik portrayed a tough character who faced formidable adversaries on screen, he would ultimately confront an even more formidable challenge later in life with his pitiful wife. Join us as we delve into the heartbreaking story of Robert Yurik and his wife's passing. Robert Michael Yurik, a multifaceted American actor, television producer, and beloved figure in the entertainment industry, graced the world with his talent and charisma from December 19, 1946, to April 16, 2002. His impressive career spanned three decades and encompassed a remarkable array of roles, earning him a distinguished place in television and film history. Robert Urich embarked on his television career in the early 1970s, marking the inception of a journey that would see him become a household name. He started with guest appearances and roles in short-lived television series, where he honed his craft and showcased his versatility. His television debut occurred in 1972, when he appeared in a guest-starring role on the popular series The FBI. This was a significant step for the aspiring actor, as it allowed him to showcase his talent to a broader audience. The pivotal moment in Yurik's career came in 1973 when he secured a lead role in the television series Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice. The show was an adaptation of the 1969 film of the same title, and Yurik's performance was a critical turning point. Unfortunately, despite his efforts and those of the cast and crew, the series struggled in the ratings and was ultimately canceled after just six episodes. However, Yurik was not deterred by this setback, and his determination paid off later in 1973 when he made his film debut alongside of the legendary Clint Eastwood in Magnum Force. In this action-packed thriller, Urich portrayed a vigilante motorcycle patrol police officer, further establishing his presence in the world of cinema. In 1975, Yurik's career took another significant leap forward when he was cast in the action crime drama series S.W.A.T. This opportunity was not handed to him easily. It was Burt Reynolds who convinced the executive producer, Aaron Spelling, to give Yurik a chance to audition for the role. Yurik's reading left a lasting impression on Spelling, who subsequently cast him as Officer Jim Street in the series. SW8 became a mid-season replacement and quickly garnered high ratings, demonstrating Yurik's ability to connect with audiences. The show's success led to a second season, but it was not without controversy. Due to its violent content, S. Waite faced cancellation in 1976. Nevertheless, Yurik's portrayal of Officer Jim Street had already solidified his reputation as a talented actor in the industry. In 1977, Yurik took on the role of Peter the Tennis Player in the popular sitcom Soap. His appearance in the show was notable, as it added a layer of humor and charm to the series. However, it was his role in the bewitched spin-off series Tabitha that truly demonstrated his acting prowess. Cast as Paul Thurston, a charismatic and ego-driven talk show host, Yurik's performance was captivating. Initially, Tabitha enjoyed strong ratings, but schedule changes later caused a decline in viewership, leading to the show's cancellation in 1978 after only 13 episodes. Shortly after the setback with Tabitha, Yurik found himself working with the renowned producer Aaron Spelling once again. This time, he landed the lead role in the hit series Vega. Yurik portrayed Dan Tanna, a suave and resourceful private detective who tackled various crimes in the glitzy and gritty setting of Las Vegas. The show quickly became a fan favorite and a rating success for ABC. Yurik's performance in Vega earned him two Golden Globe Award nominations, solidifying his status as a talented actor. However, as the series entered its third season, ratings began to decline. Despite Yurik's compelling portrayal and the show's popularity, it faced challenges due to limited network support. Ultimately, 
Vegas was canceled at the end of its third season in June 1981. Following the conclusion of Vega, Urich transitioned to the world of film, signing with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, MGM. His debut film for MGM was Endangered Species in 1982, a science fiction film directed by Alan Rudolph. This shift marked a new phase in Urich's career as he explored the opportunities and challenges that the world of cinema had to offer. Following his appearance in Endangered Species in 1982, Urich made a return to television with the series Gavilan. In this show, he portrayed the title character, Gavilan, a former CIA agent who had transitioned into the world of oceanography. However, despite Urich's efforts, Gavilan faced an unfortunate fate and was canceled after only seven episodes. In 1984, Urich ventured into the world of film once again, starring in two noteworthy productions. First, he appeared in The Ice Pirates, a science fiction comedy film that offered a unique and humorous take on interstellar adventures. Later that same year, he took on a role in Wes Craven's Invitation to Hell, a horror film directed by the acclaimed Wes Craven. Continuing his work in film, Urich co-starred in Turk 182 in 1985, although the film did not achieve commercial success. Nevertheless, his dedication to his craft remained unwavering. In the same year, 1985, Urich made a triumphant return to episodic television as he assumed the title role in Spencer for Hire. This detective drama series became a hit, and enjoyed a successful run for three seasons, solidifying Urich's status as a television star. Even after the series concluded, he continued to portray Spencer in several television films, including Spencer Ceremony, 1993, Spencer Pale Kings and Princes, 1994, Spencer the Judas Goat, 1994, and Spencer A Savage Place, 1995. In 1988, Urich hosted the documentary series National Geographic Explorer, showcasing his ability to engage with diverse a subject matter. His outstanding work on the series earned him a Cabliacia Award, underscoring his talents beyond acting. One of the highlights of Urich's career came in 1989 when he portrayed Jake Spoon in the acclaimed television miniseries Lonesome Dove. His performance in this epic Western saga garnered him numerous positive reviews and further solidified his reputation as a talented and versatile actor. In the 1990s, Urich transitioned into television films and embarked on a series of projects. Between 1990 and 1991, he starred in the sitcom American Dreamer and also took on a leading role in the TV movie 83 Hours Till Dawn. The following year, he headlined the drama series Crossroads which aired on ABC for 10 episodes. Although it didn't achieve long-term success, it further established Urich's presence on the small screen. One of his notable ventures in the early 90s was the sitcom It Had to Be You in 1993, where he starred alongside Faye Dunaway. Unfortunately, the show received unfavorable reviews and was canceled after just four episodes. Despite these setbacks, Urich continued to explore different opportunities, and in 1995, he lent his voice to the rare one-night showing of the Disney television documentary Alien Encounters from New Tomorrowland, a unique project that remains elusive to this day. In 1996, Urich took on the lead role in the TNT Western series The Lazarus Man, which earned solid ratings and was even renewed for a second season. However, tragedy struck when Urich revealed that he had been diagnosed with synovial sarcoma. Despite the show's success, its production company, Castle Rock Entertainment, decided to cancel it due to his health condition. Urich expressed his frustration, stating that they didn't consult his doctors or inquire about his ability to work. In 2000, he sued the production company for breach of contract, and the lawsuit ended with a confidential settlement. During his battle with cancer, Urich didn't let his illness define him. In 1997, he hosted the medical documentary series Vital Signs and also appeared in the PBS series Boatworks. After a year of rigorous treatment, 
He was declared cancer-free and made a triumphant return to television in 1998 as Captain Jim Kennedy III in Love Boat, The Next Wave, which aired on UPN for two seasons. Urich's artistic talents extended beyond television as he made his Broadway debut in 2000, playing the role of Billy Flynn in the musical Chicago. He also starred in the North American tour of the musical in 1999 and 2000. In the subsequent year, he took on a co-starring role in Emeril, a sitcom featuring celebrity chef Emeril Lagasse. Although the show received mixed reviews, Urich received praise for his performance. Regrettably, Emeril marked Robert Urich's final role in a television series. His last television film, Night of the Wolf, aired on Animal Planet the night before his death. In July 1996, Urich made a poignant announcement that would change the course of his life. He revealed that he had been diagnosed with synovial sarcoma a rare and aggressive cancer that targets soft tissues. Despite this devastating news, Uric exhibited unwavering determination and resilience. He decided to continue working, even while undergoing grueling treatments for his illness, becoming an inspiration to many facing similar challenges. Uric's battle with cancer didn't just inspire him to fight for his own life. It also motivated him to become a passionate advocate for cancer awareness and research. His efforts were widely recognized, earning him an award from the John Wayne Cancer Institute and the Gilda Radner Courage Award. His commitment to the cause extended to the establishment of the Urich Fund for the University of Michigan Comprehensive Cancer Center, a charitable initiative aimed at raising funds for cancer research. In a remarkable display of generosity, Urich donated the $125,000 prize money he won when he appeared on an episode of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire to further support cancer-related initiatives. His dedication to the fight against cancer was further solidified when he was declared cancer-free in 1998, a testament to his resilience and the progress made in medical treatment. Not content with personal triumph, Urich took on the role of national spokesperson for the American Cancer Society in 1998, using his platform to raise awareness and advocate for cancer prevention, treatment, and research. However, the shadow of cancer would return to haunt Urich's life. In November 2001, he revealed during an interview that his doctors had detected lumps in his body. Miraculously, what he referred to as a wonder drug, had managed to clear them up, offering a glimmer of hope amidst the uncertainty. Sadly, Urich's health took a turn for the worse in the week leading up to his death. He was hospitalized at Los Robles Hospital and Medical Center in Thousand Oaks due to breathing problems. On April 16, 2002, Robert Urich passed away at the hospital, leaving behind a legacy of strength, courage, and unwavering dedication to the fight against cancer. His funeral mass was held on April 19th at St. Charles Borromeo Church in North Hollywood, where friends, family, and admirers came together to bid their final farewell. Uric's final resting place reflects his love for his family and the cherished moments spent with them. His ashes were interred on the grounds of his family's vacation home in Prince Edward County, Ontario, Canada. A poignant monument was erected in the Westlake Church of Christ Cemetery near the family's vacation home, serving as a lasting tribute to a man who faced adversity with grace and used his influence to make a difference in the lives of those affected by cancer. Robert Michael Urich's personal life was marked by love, family, and enduring partnerships. His journey in marriage and parenthood reflected the same dedication and commitment that characterized his illustrious career in the entertainment industry. In 1968, Urich embarked on his first marriage when he tied the knot with actress Barbara Rucker. However, their union faced challenges, and the couple eventually decided to part ways, leading to their divorce in 1974. While this marriage may not have stood the test of time, it marked the beginning of Urich's exploration of the complexities of love and relationships.
In 1975, Robert Urich found enduring love when he married actress Heather Menzies. Their union was one that would transcend time and trials, remaining steadfast until his untimely passing in 2002. Heather Menzies, known for her role in The Sound of Music, became not only his life partner but also an integral part of his family. Together, Robert Urich and Heather Menzies embarked on a journey of parenthood, adopting three children, Ryan, Emily, and Allison. Their shared commitment to family was evident in their decision to provide loving homes for these children, and their roles as parents would become a central part of their lives. As a couple, Urich and Menzies navigated the ups and downs of life with grace and resilience. They supported each other through the challenges of Urich's career and his battle with cancer demonstrating the depth of their love and devotion. Their enduring partnership was a testament to the strength of their bond and their unwavering commitment to each other. Heather Margaret Brotherston Menzies, a woman of diverse experiences and talents, was born on December 3, 1949, in Toronto, Canada, to Scottish parents who had immigrated to Canada following World War II. Her father, an aspiring artist, instilled in her a love for the arts from an early age. Heather's upbringing was far from conventional, as her family's adventurous spirit led them to various places around the world. By the time she celebrated her 14th birthday, Heather had called Vancouver, Miami, London, and Southern California home. This nomadic childhood exposed her to a rich tapestry of cultures and experiences, shaping her into a person of cultural depth and adaptability. Within her family, Heather had a younger sister named Sheila and an older brother named Neil. Neil, her older sibling, remained an important presence in her life until his passing in 2019. Heather Menzies completed her high school education at John Burroughs High School in Burbank, California, graduating in 1967. Her passion for the arts extended beyond her academic pursuits, and she furthered her studies at Falcon Studios University of the Arts. This educational background would prove valuable as she embarked on her journey in the entertainment industry, where she would leave a lasting mark. Heather Margaret Brotherston Menzies made her debut on the screen in 1964, marking the beginning of a diverse and impactful acting career. Her journey in the entertainment industry was marked by notable roles and memorable moments. Heather's initial foray into acting came with her appearance in the television series The Farmer's Daughter. However, it was her breakthrough role that would etch her into the annals of cinematic history. At the age of 14, with no prior acting experience, she was cast as Louisa, one of the Von Trapp children, in the iconic film The Sound of Music. This role not only showcased her natural talent, but also allowed her to display her vocal prowess as she sang unforgettable songs like So Long, Farewell and The Lonely Goat Herd in the film. Following her success in The Sound of Music, Menzies continued to grace the television and film screens with her presence. Her television credits included appearances in series like Alias Smith & Jones, T.J. Hooker, Dragnet, Room 222, Bonanza, Marcus Welby, M.D., and The Bob Newhart Show. She took on the role of Jessica Six in the TV series Logan's Run, demonstrating her versatility as an actress. Heather Menzies' talent also extended to the big screen. She appeared in movies such as Hawaii, How Sweet It Is, Hail Hero, Piranha, and Endangered Species, leaving her mark in various genres. In addition to her acting career, Heather Menzies posed for Playboy magazine in 1973, featured in a pictorial titled Tender Trap, a playful reference to her role in The Sound of Music. Her presence in the magazine garnered attention beyond her acting career. As her career continued to flourish, Heather Menzies also ventured into the realm of television films. She was cast in several notable projects, including The Keegans, James Dean, Tail Gunner Joe, and Captain America further establishing her as a respected and accomplished actress in both film and television. 
Heather Menzies' contributions to the entertainment industry, from her iconic role in The Sound of Music to her appearances in various television series and films, showcased her talent and versatility. Her journey in the world of entertainment left a lasting legacy that continues to be celebrated by audiences and fans around the world. Heather Margaret Brotherston Menzies had a rich personal life that intertwined with her successful acting career. Her romantic journey was marked by two significant marriages and her dedication to family and philanthropy. Heather's first marriage was to John Cluett in 1969, a union that lasted until 1973. Following the end of this marriage, her life took a pivotal turn when she married Robert Urich in 1975. Urich's passing in 2002 wouldn't be the end of Menzies and her own personal battle with the demon known as cancer. It was in November 2017 that Menzies Urich's life took a heartbreaking turn. She received a devastating diagnosis of terminal brain cancer, a diagnosis that would change the course of her life and challenge her in unimaginable ways. Despite the grim prognosis, Menzies Urich faced her illness with remarkable resilience and a fighting spirit that inspired those around her. Throughout her battle with brain cancer, Menzies Urich continued to display her unwavering determination to live life to the fullest. She remained a source of strength for her loved ones and a symbol of hope for others facing similar challenges. Her courage in the face of adversity became a testament to the human spirit's resilience and the power of positivity. Heather Menzies passed away on Christmas Eve in 2017 with her family, which she and Robert Urich had constructed together, surrounding her. Their three children stayed with her until the very end, echoing the support Menzies had previously provided to her husband when he battled cancer more than 15 years earlier. It could be perceived as somewhat ironic that a woman who had displayed remarkable resilience in assisting her husband through his cancer ordeal and had dedicated the rest of her life to fighting the disease ultimately succumbed to it, especially in such a brief period. This represents a profound tragedy, but it also carries a glimmer of hope in the enduring love evident in their children and their joint commitment to combating the devastating illness that ultimately claimed both of their lives. In the end, it's probable that Menzies wasn't too apprehensive about leaving this world to reunite with her husband of many years. Despite the sorrow, there are those who might see this poignant story of a decades-long struggle as having a somewhat positive conclusion. People, whether famous or not, will keep grappling with cancer. However, it is hopeful that the love and efforts of both Yurik and Menzies, both individually and together, will help ease some of that suffering for future generations. The Robert Yurik Foundation remains active under the guidance of the couple's children, including their son, Ryan Yurich. Furthermore, Ryan pursued a medical career influenced by his parents' experiences with the aspiration of eventually making a difference for individuals facing a similar destiny. The tragic story of Robert Urick and his wife, Heather Menzies, is undeniably filled with pain and sorrow, yet it also carries a significant amount of love and hope. Their love for each other endured until the very end and even beyond, with Heather Menzies dedicating her entire life to battling the disease that ultimately took her husband, meeting a similar fate herself. Their marriage exemplified a rare and enduring perseverance and love, particularly noteworthy given their status in the public eye. They remained together for over two decades of marriage, and their love continued to flourish even after their individual lights dimmed. Their legacy was carried forward by those who, in turn, dedicated their lives to helping others experiencing similar pain. In a world often shadowed by darkness, it's important to remember that there is also a significant amount of light, and the tragic story of Robert Urich and Heather Menzies serves as a poignant example of both emerging from the same source. What do you think about the tragic ending of Robert Urich and Menzies Urich? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. 
Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.